Security configuration management is a critical preventative layer of enterprise cyber defense because the majority of attacks we see on the internet today involve the exploitation of insecure settings at some point or another. In many real-world cases, a simple security setting on a single system could have made things a lot harder for an attacker, maybe have even stopped their attack altogether. It's for this reason that many standards call for a minimum security settings policy across mission-critical systems or those who process, transport, or store sensitive data. That said, it can be very difficult to ensure that proper security settings are in place everywhere manually due to a number of factors. Uh, Out-of-the-box settings are often very insecure, and even after an asset has been hardened, it can become a real challenge to keep it that way over the years due to evolving security standards and shifts in business objectives. Tripwire Enterprise is here to help with its policy management engine. Tripwire Enterprise dynamically compares desired assets against any number of desired security policies, even custom policies. In this way, it's possible for our users to detect how well they're doing very quickly and spot the most important gaps in security settings and compliance objectives. At a high level, IT management and executive leadership can use our reports to view and convey the big picture here. Um, this helps them show how any given business unit is doing over time. And it can help them measure and commend improvements in security posture, as well as indicate which areas need more investments for success. Tripwire Enterprise will also let us dig into these scores, you know, see why the trends are getting better or worse. Uh, so by clicking on this report here in PCI Test Results Linux, uh, I can dive into those tests and see, you know, why am I passing? Why am I failing for any of these given um, objectives when they're lined up against any given system or device? As you can see here, it's organized by requirements. So we're taking a look at these PCI test results and for the various requirements under here where there are technical objectives, security configuration objectives that we're testing against, uh, the report here is organized uh, in that manner. Uh, you can demonstrate success by showing the passing tests. You can go in and list those out, which is very useful for internal audit and so on. You know, if you want to show that you're doing a good job, if you want to you know, prove that um, you know, your prior is giving you a thumbs up, you know, we've seen these used for internal audit and external audit as well. Uh, you know, passing these on to auditors to, so that you can save time during your um, your audit. Uh, however, I often find that uh, a lot of our customers are very interested in the failed test because that indicates there's something that we can do to improve our security posture, to improve our compliance in this case. Um, so you can go through these different subsections. Um, I have an example lined up under requirement eight here for assign a unique ID to each person with computer access. Um, if I click on the failures for this Coruscant system over here, uh, I have 18 failures and I can dive into those. And you'll see here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see better, um, you'll see that basically uh, this detailed test results report that we dove into is uh, you know, very verbose. It gives all the information about the different requirements, uh, subsections of that requirement getting into like 8.1 identification management and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and finally you get to these neat little things called tests. And I have a particular test I want to call out here that I think is pretty self-explanatory and is, is a pretty good demonstration case. So if we look at this um, here, basically the test is verify the pass max days parameter in the file Etsy login defs. And basically uh, the, the, the info here tells us what's going on. We're, we're looking at this login defs to make sure that users are forced to change passwords after 90 days or less. Um, so um, we have the description of what is you know required, and then we also have the remediation guidance here in bold that tells us how to fix it. It's nice to have both. Um, it's one thing to get a report card that says, hey, you're wrong, uh, but then it's another thing entirely to have the answer and, and how to uh, fix it right there with it. Uh, we also save the evidence here. So if you take a look at this, um, you can see that um, the current pass max days on that server is set to 99,999, which is probably a little bit... Um, 
a little bit too high. Uh, and this is great because, you know, if you're if you're concerned that this may be a false positive, positive or what have you, you have all the information here, the file we were looking at, what time we looked at it, um, and the actual values that we found in the file. Uh, so all the details that you need uh, to, you know, validate this issue and uh, tackle the issue. Another neat thing here is that if you go into this alternative view, this test results view, uh, you can go in and, and uh, take a look at some of these things. Um, now, the max days test is the one that we were looking at before in Etsy login defs. And uh, if there's this wrench icon, then you currently have a remediation script for um, this particular test. Uh, in my environment, I have a, a number of out-of-the-box ones loaded. Um, it's possible to add your own remediation scripts to fix these issues above and beyond the um, recommendations that we have. Now, if I go into this test, I can show you that um, you know you can you can customize everything in here. The rules that we're looking at, um, the scope, including the file that we're watching, and the conditions that are used. Um, this uses you know simple string matching or advanced regular expressions, and you can compare what you find in there, uh, you know, with simple mathematical um, expressions. There, there's a, there's a good number of different ways that that um, you can compare these guys, uh, and this is just for this particular test. So here we're just making sure that the max day setting is uh, less than or equal to 90, and uh, you know definitely greater than zero because zero means there's no setting. <laughs> Uh, now, there's remediation guidance that tells you how to fix that, like I mentioned before. It's fully customizable in this HTML editor. Uh, you can also, as I mentioned, you can use our remediation script to fix this, and you can do this through the product if you have the proper um, you know, authorization, of course. And uh, in addition, we do have a waiver and exception management area. So if you'd like to um, say that hey, I don't want to see this, this um, failure coming up every time I look at the system. I can use the waiver system to quickly waive that test. I can create a new waiver for it, no problem, and uh, you know, not see it. And perhaps uh, maybe I never want to see it again, or maybe, um, maybe I want to have an expiration date when I start seeing it again. It's all very possible. You can also keep track of who granted it and who's responsible for maintaining that ex exception. Lots of good stuff there. Uh, now, if I would like, I can create a new work order for this one. Then we have a failure. We can create a new work order to you know get that fixed. And I can say that this this new work order applies to PCI in this case. Uh, in the in the work order widget here that I have, uh, I can uh, do a number of the things. I can I've requested the work order now, and I can I can always come back and check in on this one. Uh, however. Uh, if I have the right permissions, I can also approve that work order and so I can approve that work order, give an ID here, and uh, let's just say it's um, work order 500, I don't know, uh, and uh, uh, we can hit OK. Uh, if, if you'd like to enter a comment about the work order, you can put that here. And now we have an approved work order. Now at this point, uh, you know you may have another person that's able to uh, say accept or deny these, and uh, or, or even drop the work order altogether. And finally, you can have the privilege to perform the remediation. So this remediation button will go out and uh, and fix that. So you can see that there's a pretty simple workflow here uh, that you know you can request a, a work order for, for, for the fix. You can approve or deny that or get rid of it altogether or remediate that and just fire it off and fix it. Uh, all, of course all of these um, permissions and controls are totally separated so it, there could be a different individual with all of those rights. Another great aspect of this is that uh, when you experience change, when something is suddenly different than it was yesterday, Tripwire Enterprise is very good at catching that sort of thing. And, and when it does, then you can immediately update your test results. So you don't have to wait a, a week or a, a month or a quarter before your scores are updated. If you're watching a file or a registry key, these scores can be updated in real time uh, for things like command output capture rules and so on. Um, they can be updated as often as you'd like, every so many minutes, a day, what have you. Uh, it's all up to uh, your preference. And I think that's one of the things that it makes us different is that 
not only can we you know perform these assessments tell you what needs to be fixed um, you know help point you in the right direction uh, but we can get you these results very very quickly and make sure that you know your finger is always on the pulse of your security posture